In this section, we looked at new JavaScript ES6 class syntax. First, we looked at traditional way of creating objects in JavaScript using function constructor, which initializes state or data properties using arguments passed to it. Then we attached methods to its prototype to bind the data properties and methods together. Finally, we created objects from function constructor using new keyword. Then we looked at new ES6 class declarative syntax that hides all the complexity of prototype system and provides us a uniform declarative syntax to add the data properties and methods together inside a single entity called class. All ES6 class syntax is doing is, instead of function constructor, we have a special constructor method that initializes data properties. And methods that we attach to the prototype of function are directly created as methods inside class now. Constructor method of ES6 class does the same job as of traditional function constructor. Then we looked at how we can achieve inheritance in JavaScript using traditional prototypal inheritance way. With prototypal inheritance, we have to write a lot of boilerplate code just to extend the functionality of our objects. Even though prototypal inheritance provides us a good insight on how JavaScript works, it's a difficult thing to pick for beginners or programmers from other programming languages. So, ES6 provides us with some new keywords, extends and super that we can use to inherit classes and hide all the complexity of prototypal inheritance behind the scenes. All we need to do is extend subclass with superclass using extends keyword to get access to the methods of superclass or parent class. And we call super inside constructor to attach all of its data properties as well. This makes ES6 class inheritance syntax much easier to use without having to write a lot of boilerplate code. Okay, under the hood, everything still works the same way as it used to. ES6 class is just a declarative syntax or syntactic sugar over prototypal inheritance only. Finally, we looked at some of the important things about constructor method. If you don't define a constructor method, then JavaScript engine will define an implicit constructor for you, calls super and passes all the arguments to it. But if you define a constructor method on your own, then you need to make a call to super to set the execution context. Hence, you should call super before using this keyword inside the constructor. Then we looked at another special type of keyword, static, that allows us to attach properties directly to class and those properties are not accessible through objects created from the class. Inside shows app, we used static keyword to initialize default props object and defines show index field inside it. Even though you can attach properties to class outside of it as it's just a function constructor under the hood, but you should prefer using static keyword as it binds everything together inside a single unit class. Then we figured out that even though we didn't pass props to super method, this dot props is still set by React internally after constructor method is done executing. This means that this dot props is set irrespective of whether you pass props to super call or not. But if you don't pass props to super method, then you can't access this dot props inside constructor. So as a good practice and to avoid silly mistakes, you should always pass props to super call whenever you choose to define your own constructor. Finally, you should prefer using ES6 class syntax to create class components rather than using create class syntax, which is going to be deprecated soon. Alright, let's meet in our next section on understanding React by building pet game app.